I'm pretty sure I've said in the past that Tesla would be a stock that I just couldn't do a review of because of their valuations. That being said, when a stock that has been up over 500% in the past year takes a fairly significant dip, I'm pretty interested in seeing if this maybe is a good buying opportunity. So for today, we're gonna take a look at Tesla. <laughs> Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt, and before we get started here, I just need to say, not advice, don't take it as advice, any advice, speak to an advisor, it's just for your entertainment purposes only, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm sure Tesla is a company, though, that needs no introduction, so I don't want to spend the time really going into their roots and background, since we're all pretty familiar with this company. But what I do want to cover in today's video would be the numbers that we'll have for Tesla, why I like this as a potential investment, and my thoughts when it comes to Kathy Wood's rather ambitious stock prediction for Tesla. But to start, we'll focus on the numbers. So per usual, there's not a whole lot to really dissect from these numbers here, but I still wanna go through them just because I feel like it helps give some context for this company. We'll start off with a market cap. Not really something I ever pay too much attention to, but just something worth noting, or at least I felt it was worth noting. A $635 billion market cap means that this is a very big company. That said, I don't think its market cap has reached its full potential, and I could see in the future, I'm not saying anytime soon, maybe in the next five to 10 years, Tesla does have the ability to be a trillion dollar company and up there in the ranks with Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, and Google. Now, part of the reason why I have stayed away from Tesla in the past is because of this PE ratio. Fortunately, now it's under a thousand, which is, I guess, good to see. It's still at 984.8, which is incredibly high times earnings, but, Nonetheless, it's gone down a little bit over the years. When we look at the three-year PE ratio, we can see it drops significantly to 80.89. So yes, this stock will still be trading at a premium in the future, but it does give me a little sign of hope that this won't always be a completely overvalued stock. Now, you could look at this a few ways. To me, I get encouraged by seeing something like this, but when I see something like this, knowing that it might be trading at a little bit of a discount in the future, doesn't necessarily make me wanna go all into this investment, but rather use my strategy of what I like to do of buying in thirds, where I might put a portion in now, a portion down the road, and then potentially another portion even further down the road, but that way I can get in at multiple different buying opportunities and hopefully some of those opportunities will be at a better value than what they're at currently. They still have a promising revenue growth of 28.31%, so for a car company, I'm okay with that because overall Tesla did start as an auto manufacturer and we all know that's a very expensive business. Now they've kind of revolutionized the way we even look at cars today, but I think as they continue to expand their business and add different functionalities or different kind of operations towards the Tesla business, then I think this revenue growth could actually continue to remain at a promising number if not exceed where it is currently. So I wouldn't be surprised as they roll out some of these future operations if if we see this revenue growth go to the you know 35 40 ish percent year over year last week quick ratio of 1.49 i know i tend to be all over the place when it comes to these quick ratios but i'm pretty encouraged by this quick ratio Reason being is because, again, as I mentioned, they're a car manufacturer. That is not a cheap business to get into, and they've essentially built everything from the ground up. So to see that they still have more short-term assets than liabilities is something that I'd like to see because it's a risky business to get into. And now, should they need to raise money to continue operations or expand what they're currently doing, it'll become much easier for Tesla to do than if that quick ratio was less than one. So for a very capital intensive business to still have that quick ratio over one is something that I do like to see as this investment. Even though this company does have a decent looking quick ratio and has very high future outlooks or expectations when it comes to what analysts view this company in the future, they still have a very frothy valuation. So there's more to this company though than just that valuation that I like to see and what makes me more encouraged to add an investment like this to my portfolio. Now the first thing does start with Elon Musk. Say what you want about Elon Musk, I know he's made some ridiculous claims in the past, but I've been a long time fan of Elon Musk and his company, really for the past give or take 10 years now since Tesla first came on my radar. I know people tend to discredit Elon Musk because he has these huge, bold and ambitious claims and about like deliveries and fast cars and all of that, 
But I really do believe that sometimes that's necessary because I think his vision of what Tesla and SpaceX, if we're talking about Elon Musk, are so much bigger than what he can actually put down on paper that he really has to make these kind of big claims in order to get the attention that his companies need. And he's proved us wrong time and time again when it comes to these companies that he has. Everybody thought EVs were going to fail and that there's no way you can make an electric vehicle attractive. Well, he proved us wrong with that one. Same thing with rockets going into space. You know, everybody said that he couldn't do it. You can't build a self-landing rocket wise and NASA done it, all that stuff. But here we are now and SpaceX has a very promising future as well. So I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. I think he's a very bold person, especially when it comes to being a CEO, but he's not somebody that I'm going to doubt because he has proved us wrong before. The next thing that I like about Tesla though, is they have found a way to diversify their business and not just be reliant on car sales. That's actually the reason why I don't typically invest in automobile manufacturers because when you sell such a high ticket item that isn't purchased that often, your revenue sources aren't that strong. And as you guys know, I'm a big fan of like subscription services or anything that is purchased very frequently or a necessity because I like seeing revenue that comes in often and consistently. And I do believe Tesla has ventured their business away from just automobiles in a way that does allow for them to create these multiple sources of revenue on a more consistent basis. We know about their solar panels and solar roofs. Again, that's a pretty high ticket item and something we're not gonna buy that often but they've made it that you can't help but consider adding a solar roof if you were to build a house. It's not much more expensive than a traditional roof. It's significantly more durable and it has the ability to help you cut back on your electric bill. But for a more consistent source of revenue, they do have their insurance program that seems to be slowly rolling out. But that's something that I'm excited by because that would be a more consistent source of revenue. A feature functionality I heard about their insurance program that I think is kind of cool, a little creepy, but kind of cool at the same time is that they'll actually be able to monitor the way you drive. So how fast do you pull off from a stop sign or how hard you hit the brakes often? Are you making close calls with cars and everything? And they can actually adjust your insurance rate truly to the way that you drive your vehicle. So while I do see that being, again, a little creepy knowing that they know the way that I drive, I think that's gonna be a nice feature for Tesla to have and can be a great way to reward people for being a safer driver, which is, I don't know if you guys noticed this or if this is just a North Carolina thing, but drivers have gotten really bad over these past few years. So if Tesla now has an incentive for people to drive safer and it could be a reoccurring source of revenue for them, then I'm all on board for that service. And lastly is this robo taxi service that they're launching. Now there's a lot of kinks that need to be worked out with this one, but nonetheless, I'm buying into the idea of it because I like the idea that if you're a Tesla owner and you know, you're not going anywhere that day, people can just order your car and it comes to you and takes them to the airport and all of that and you could be making money literally sitting at home all day i think elon musk said that people could make around thirty thousand dollars a year through this service and i know a lot of people that would utilize this as well because some people don't necessarily like interacting with like uber drivers or lyft drivers or maybe they just don't feel comfortable getting in a car by themselves with a stranger which is totally understandable so eliminating the driver from that aspect and just having it be a self-driving car would be great Again, I don't know how they're going to work out, you know, if somebody maybe was out partying all night and damages the back of the Tesla, how they're going to be able to track all that down. That's what I'm sure they'll have to work out as well, aside just from the autonomous driving. But it's something that sounds very futuristic and something I'm very excited about. I know it's something that I would even utilize because if I'm on my way to, you know, a meeting, I have a phone call to make, I don't like using my phone and driving. So that would allow for me just to have a, you know, random car come pick me up i can continue having a phone call while on my way to a meeting and can ultimately accomplish a lot more so i'm very excited about this robo taxi service and i think the way that tesla is looking forward is enough for me to get excited about this as an investment and it's something worth considering adding to my portfolio but now i did also just want to quickly touch on kathy wood's very bold and ambitious statement now we all know this is not kathy wood's first time making a very ambitious statement about tesla stock price she said it in the past before and was for the most part right I don't think we ever hit her actual price target but she wasn't that far off from it and now she's at it again saying that this could be a four thousand dollar stock now Kathy Wood is much smarter than me much more experienced with investing and has probably a lot better insight into these companies than what I have but do I agree with this being a four thousand dollar stock not necessarily I do think that's a very bold claim but you know again she's smarter than I am 
One thing I did see though from that report is in their bear case through their Monte Carlo simulation, which is actually a very easy thing to run. I had to do those in college all the time. It's not that complicated, but it's a great tool if you know how to use it. She stated that the bear case for Tesla stock price was $1,500 a share. Now with Tesla hovering in that $600 range per share, that still gives us around $900 worth of room to grow in the next few years. So if we get into this now and have the plans of holding on to it for the next five to 10 years, if this stock reaches $1,500 a share, I'll be a very happy camper. And it, even if it really hits like $1,400 a share, and this is in Kathy Wood's worst case scenario, I'm still excited by that because that is a lot of growth for me to have inside of one position. So for those reasons, I did decide to add this to the portfolio. Truth be told, I did it Monday. I know today's Thursday, crazy week. What can you do about it? But it's not doing that great so far. So let me get all that pulled up so we can take a quick walk through this together. All right, so I very ambitiously bought 10 shares at $678 a share. Last I saw, it was trading at 635-ish a share. So not that great. We're down a lot of money in this position, but I'm not that upset about it because again, I think that we're just in a downtime right now. You know, what's that Warren Buffett phrase like be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy or something along those lines. I think that's kind of the market that we're falling into where a lot of people are going to back out right now. We're taking a lot of hits in almost every sector in the stock market. If you look at heat maps, they're all red basically. But that being said, this could be the time for buying opportunities because things aren't trading at all time highs or at significant premiums. So I am excited to own this. I hope it turns around sooner than later. I actually have another buy order in for this already though. I have five shares, uh, a limit order at 575. I don't think it's gonna go that far down, but if it does, I definitely wanna make sure I'm in a position to take care of it or take advantage of it. So I do have that limit order in good till canceled. We'll just let that one ride out for the next month or so and see if we do actually trigger or execute that order. Square those is also not doing that hot. What can you do about it? The market's been down. I don't expect this portfolio to be down. I do wish we had a few winners in here. I don't like seeing all red inside my portfolio, but as I've been saying, it is what it is. So those are my thoughts on Tesla. Let me know your thoughts about it below. Remember, if you like this video, it's a five cent donation for charity. If you subscribe, that's a 10 cent donation for charity. So do what you please. Just know that those kind actions are actually gonna go to a good cause. So bear that in mind, I guess. All that said, I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch us. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're right here with me, and I really appreciate that. But I'm going to let you go ahead, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.